wrapping up the devotional series with Spurgeon, of course. It's been exciting. Unexpected. <laughs> Highly amusing. But one thing I'm so glad for is in running into conflict in developing the videos, we ran into the wisdom of being able to find a better way to do them. And I like that about God, is that a lot of people like to say when he closes one door, he opens another. <laughs> I've been in rooms where all the doors are closed and he got me through it, so I'm not quite sure about that one, but if it works for you, it works for you. But what I like is that God always reveals through circumstance and sometimes directly through his word if we're asking for direction he'll tell us he'll show us and while we interpret that sometimes to be oh uh, circumstantial meaning that if something didn't work out, somebody screwed up or somebody did something wrong, maybe God <laughs> allowed the circumstances to direct us because he couldn't get a word to us in order to have us be just led by simply telling us to turn right or left. Instead, he blocked the way so that we would go another way. And that is what I find <laughs> humorous about my life as well as fascinating about everyone else that I've ever met that is a born again Christian led by the Spirit of God. Because the wind bloweth whether it will, you neither know where it's coming from nor where it's going, so choose everyone led by the Spirit of God. And what that means is simply that, guess what? If you think you know what's gonna to happen tomorrow, you don't. So don't get too carried away about your plans. If you're really a Christian, they just might take a turn for some place you don't know you're going. Let's find out where we're going today with Spurgeon. Ye that love the Lord hate evil. Thou hast good reason to hate evil, for only consider what harm it has already wrought thee. Oh, what a world of mischief sin has brought into thy heart. Sin blinded you so that you could not see the beauty of the Savior. It made you deaf so that you could not hear the Redeemer's tender invitations. Sin turned your feet into the way of death and poured poison into the very fountain of your being. It tainted your heart and made it deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Oh, what a creature thou wast when evil had done it. Oh, what a creature you were when evil had done its utmost with you before divine grace interposed. Thou wast an heir of wrath, even as everyone else. Thou didst run with the multitude to do evil. Such were all of us. But Paul reminds us, but you are washed, but you are sanctified, but you are justified in the name of the Lord Jesus and by the Spirit of our God. We have good reason indeed for hating evil when we look back and trace its deadly workings. Such mischief did evil for us and to us that our souls would have been lost had not omnipotent love interfered to redeem us. Even now it is an active enemy. It's ever watching to do us hurt and to drag us into perdition. Therefore hate evil. O oh, Christians, hate evil unless you desire trouble. If you would strew your path with thorns and plant briars in your death pillow, then neglect to hate evil. But if you would live a happy life and die a peaceful death, then walk in all the ways of holiness, hating evil, even unto the end. If you truly love your Savior and would honor him, then hate evil. We know of no cure for the love of evil in a Christian like abundant intercourse with the Lord Jesus. 
dwell much with him, and it is impossible for you to be at peace with sin. Evil is a malevolent force that affects people. A person can be under the influence of evil. They could be satiated with evil. But God created them. They are technically capable of being redeemed. There are those who say, oh, don't pray for that person because they're evil. And I say, no, pray for that person and cast out the evil. For if God is able to save to the uttermost, then any man, woman, or child that you consider evil, I consider opportunity for God to move in a way that you never dreamed of or thought of before. But evil will come at you from many directions because it is a spiritual, malevolent force. And we need to be mindful that if we seek to know the Lord, if we want to walk in His ways, if we want to die peacefully, if we want to not trip over our own feet, then according to Spurgeon, he says, we need to hate evil. Paul said, Oh the wood that I oh the good that I would not, and that which I would not I do. Oh wretched man that I am, who can deliver me from this body of sin? Evil at work in you causes you to give in to sin. Love causes you to seek holiness and develop a relationship with God. The biggest mistake that people make is they think that they have to participate in something evil to be evil. The fact is, if you do nothing at all, you'll find yourself evil. You will be swayed. And as the force said, go to the dark side. But it's not even just a temptation, because you're already, before you're saved, evil. And as shocking as it may seem, when you were born in sin, the baby that looks so innocent, be mindful to be praying for them. For they were conceived in sin and born in sin. And their destiny is up to you. Hate evil. The consequences of it might even be unto your children. Morning and evening. When we only do morning, we're spurging. God bless you.